Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest where it's definitely fall going into winter. I hope everybody is having a good start to their week, studying lots, staying productive, and of course, staying healthy. I've got a great week of live IELTS classes coming up for you, starting today with speaking part one, talking about how to get band nine uh, in the speaking, and of course, uh, for speaking part one. Hi, Victor. Hi, Sammy. Good to see our members in the class. Hi, Pachu, uh, Chavi, Maksud, uh, Naveen. Nice to see many of our uh, regular students as well. Uh, these material students are presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Definitely visit us there, spend a couple dollars and get some of the most popular uh, materials online for students to improve their IELTS band scores. Uh, for the general IELTS, check us out at G ieltshelp.com that's generalieltshelp.com we're one of the only companies in the world that actually make a clear distinction between learning materials for the academic versus general materials because it simply just makes sense that if you're studying for the general IELTS exam you should focus on those materials only I'll quickly show you our websites this is the academic website here with the blue background you can click that big red button to join. Uh, when you join our website students, and you can join for free when you click the green button, um, when you join the, the website by clicking these buttons, you get a My Student account, which has all of your videos, practice exams, interactive quizzes, and so on. And um, in that My Student account, uh, you also have access to uh, student partner speaking and speaking interview practice. If you click on that student uh, partner speaking, you enter this page here, which is uh, the live speaking practice. And you can see that right now we have uh, Moni, Rahul Preet, and Carolina uh, waiting for someone to uh, join in and ping them and say hello and then video or audio chat. So you will always find people in here waiting for somebody uh, to talk to you and practice your IELTS, okay? So definitely uh, visit us on that page, uh, use it, and uh, it's free for everyone. You can do that in the general IELTS as well, the general IELTS, gltshelp.com. It's the green background and you can click that uh, big red button uh, to join us there. Uh, Shahab is saying that the sound is not clear. If it, anybody else is experiencing that, let me know. Uh, otherwise, Shahab, that's going to be on your end. Okay, it's important that the sound is clear. We are doing speaking today. So it should be. Okay, let me brighten up our uh, day here a little bit. Um, Hargoon, our app is called Academic IELTS Help. Uh, and the app Academic IELTS Help links to the website and General IELTS Help app links to gieltshelp.com, okay? So, okay, so I can see for a lot of students that it's clear. So definitely it's on somebody else's end there. Uh, thanks, Kowal, for the compliment on the shirt. And Bekshan, it's great to see you in class and great to see that you're pushing forward and studying lots. Excellent. Okay, uh, students, this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak and repeat, okay? Uh, repetition, it's not the only way you should be studying speaking, but it is a great way uh, to make improvement in your pronunciation, in your intonation, uh, in your diction. So make sure to speak and repeat. Uh, does anybody know what type of English I'm using myself, where it's from? Can anybody, I'm sure, I think, I'm sure some students know where I'm from and what kind of English I'm using, what my accent is. Sammy says, Canada. Yes, I'm Canadian. Um, not East Coast, though, for Dobbs. The opposite side, right? So, 
Uh, that's right, Janiel, West Coast, West Coast. Okay. Yeah, Canadian West Coast. That's right, Hassan. Very good. Yeah. Um, it's, a lot of students think that there's uh, like a Canadian accent and there's an American accent, but it's not quite accurate. There are a lot of different forms of English, even uh, within Canada and U.S. As, of course, many of you know, Canada and U.S. are big, big countries. So you'll come across different styles of English uh, depending on where you are in each of those countries. West Coast has its own kind of style of English. So if you go to Vancouver, Seattle, San Francisco, you'll find kind of a similar style of English. Uh, and then if you go to East Coast, you find a different style uh, that's um, somewhat similar to West Coast. In Central U.S. and Canada, you'll find uh, quite a different type of English. And in Southern U.S., you'll find a very different type of English, the Southern accent. It's even called the Southern accent. Um, okay. Students, if you have questions about English IELTS or products, don't be shy. Send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Okay. Yeah, but you, West Coast Canadian English is very similar to Californian. That's because Californian is also West Coast, of course, right? Okay, uh, you can get our books in hard copy paperback from Amazon. Uh, search for A Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps General IELTS. And um, our schedule for this week, uh, we have speaking right now, uh, part one. Tomorrow we have reading and task one for everybody. And then we have speaking and reading. And then uh, members take note of this. We have a Q&A session uh, this week on Saturday, and then we'll have a speaking part three for everyone. Okay. Uh, you can always find the schedule for the week on our YouTube community bulletin. So if you're on our channel and you check out our YouTube posts, you'll find lots of great posts there as well. Uh, then, um, you can also find our schedule there with other goodies. Okay, students, so uh, the IELTS speaking exam, uh, it takes about 12, maximum 15 minutes. You uh, go into an exam room, you are wearing a face mask these days because of the pandemic, which in some ways it's, you know, it's really um, irritating, it's annoying, it's already challenging enough to speak another language um, in such a, an intense situation with so much pressure. But in many ways, it is protecting you from uh, catching potentially a very harmful illness. IELTS is an international exam. People from a lot of different uh, contexts in life go to the IELTS exam from many different parts. So it does make sense. Uh, I think even if there's like a really bad influenza that's not COVID, IELTS, it would make sense to wear a mask, at least for the, uh, the paper or the sitting version of the exam, just because there's so many different people from different places. Okay. Uh, for the speaking section, maybe they should just, you know, in my opinion, if you want my opinion, I think they should do it face to face, but maybe with like a glass wall, uh, between like a shield, kind of like what you see at a bank or what you see, um, uh, at uh, like Western union, for example, when you have that kind of glass divider between the speaker and the examiner, I think that would be great for IELTS. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Uh, so yeah, I'll let British Council know about that. Um, that would be fantastic. And I think that would probably decrease students' nervousness as well, having that glass wall, right? Kush Kaur, good luck on your speaking tomorrow. Pay attention today. Okay. All right. Um, so here we go. Uh, you go into your speaking exam. Now, uh, students, when you walk into your speaking interview, number one, uh, to get those high band scores, definitely go early. Okay. It's very obvious that people need time to speak their best English. I still think that too many people are walking into their out speaking interview and they're not speaking English for at least a few hours before their speaking exam. Okay. Um, can anybody identify with that or is everybody using English only before their exam? This is one of the most important tips that I can give you. I, it's so important. I can do like a triple exclamation mark. Make sure that you are using only English on the day 
of your speaking exam, uh, tell people around you of your goal to get a good grade. I'm going to have to just kind of get out of the speaking thing here because everybody's inviting me to speak with them and I can't do that right now. So just give me a second. Okay, so tell people around you of your goal to get a high score in IELTS and you must use English, okay? Uh, remember, students, it takes time and effort uh, for the brain to produce its uh, best communication in a foreign language, in your own language as well, but especially in a foreign language like English. Okay, uh, so um, yeah, way too many students go into their IELTS exam and they're going in cold, okay? Don't go in cold into your exam. That's really bad. Uh, Gaming007 says, do accents affect the bands? Not really, Gaming007. As long as the examiner understands you clearly, you can get a very high band score, even with a thick accent, as long as they understand you. Okay, so they do mark you on pronunciation, but it doesn't matter nearly as much as people think. Okay, so that's tip number one. Uh, go to your uh, exam early, okay? And practice with other candidates, okay? Uh, don't get into discourse or arguments just practice, okay? So don't try to convince other candidates about the right strategy or don't try to change their English last minute. There's no point to do that, okay? Don't try to um, learn new English or give new advice to anybody or get new advice or uh, tips from anybody minutes before your exam. That's a really bad idea, okay? You can't do any kind of uh, productive learning 10, 20 minutes before an exam. So don't do that, okay? Especially not a language exam that takes months and years to learn. Uh, so don't do that, uh, just practice, okay? Just practice, that's all you need to do, okay? Uh, take some sheets with you. So print out a couple of uh, practice Q&A sheets, okay? Question and answer sheets for the speaking. You can do that even off of our websites. So just do that, okay? And tip number three, be confident and enunciate, okay? So be yourself, you paid good money to be there and enunciate. Uh, does everybody know what the word enunciate means? This word here, enunciate, not enunciate, but enunciate. Uh, what does that mean to enunciate? It's very important. What does it mean? Anybody who has not seen this word should look it up and learn what it means, okay? Enunciate means to say words clearly and stress the words so that the audience can hear them specifically and with ease, okay? So just like what I'm doing right now, you'll hear me do this right now. It doesn't necessarily just mean to pronounce clearly. I could give an accent like this to my speaking, but if I enunciate clearly, you can still understand me, right? So I can add a weird accent, even a strong lisp like this, I can add it to my speaking, but you can understand me because it's enunciated, okay? So enunciation is very important, all right? You can have an accent and you can still enunciate. You can speak perfectly clear English and not enunciate. I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I'm speaking like this with my perfect accent, but I'm speaking quietly and I'm not really stressing anything, but I'm just kind of smoothly moving through the words, it's really hard for anybody to understand anything, right? So um, I can speak with perfect West Coast Canadian accent and not enunciate. OK, 
Okay, so enunciation is not just pronunciation. Keep that in mind. Okay. All right. Um, so enunciate, practice enunciating. And of course, especially because as you've seen in many of the new videos, uh, you're wearing a face mask. Okay. And the face mask is muffling. So enunciation is much more important as well. Okay. All right. Now to get band nine, give original fluent complete and accurate answers, okay? Um, in the simplest way, <laughs> it's kind of like uh, when people say, you know, how do you lose weight? Um, how do you lose weight? The easiest answer to that is eat less and exercise more, okay? Um, so when uh, people watch these diet programs on TV and read diet books, there's hundreds of pages, there's like hours and hours of videos on how to diet. But at the end of the day, uh, you really just want to eat less and exercise more. Yeah, Amanjot says, easy to say, but difficult to do. Exactly, Amanjot. It's the same thing here. That's my point that I'm getting at, Amanjot, is it's easy to say, but difficult to do. So uh, to get a band nine, uh, the simplest way is give original, fluent, complete, and accurate answers. Pay attention to those four points and you will get a high band. Now, easy to say, difficult to do. Just like eat less, exercise more. The more you exercise, the hungrier you get, right? All right, but that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you with this. Okay, so um, to give complete answers, let's just talk about that. That's one of the easier ones to discuss. Okay, to give complete answers, always think about the popular answer, the logical reason, and a simple common example that's specific to you. Okay, we'll use these. As we do more of these, we'll use these right now. Okay, all right. So first you have some chance to get comfortable and remember these points. Uh, and the examiner will ask you uh, some warm-up questions and of course some questions to make you feel comfortable and to greet you. Uh, the first question that they will probably ask you, maybe even before your name, is this one here. Can I see your identification? So they'll say, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I'm going to be your examiner. Uh, may I see your identification? It's very, very uh, early in the game because they want to make sure you are who you are. If you don't have identification, they just say, thank you. Uh, have a nice day. Goodbye you get a zero or a one, okay? All right, uh, Dipti says, sure, here is my passport. Yeah, that works, it's simple. Uh, show fluency right away. Carolina says, yes, of course, here's my passport that I used to register for the exam. Please have a look. It's nice and fluent. Now, Carolina, make sure you say that really nice and fluently, okay? Uh, Jainil says, my full name is Jainil. Okay, that's not the question, Jainil. Don't try to jump ahead, okay? Uh, only be reactive, not preactive, okay, in these lessons. Uh, it'll be more effective, okay? Uh, Beck John says, yes, sure, please have a look. Here it is. Okay, that's natural, Beck John. Just make sure you put a little space after look. So, yes, sure, please have a look. Here it is, okay? So, there your spacing, your intonation has to be really good, all right? Uh, Mohammed says, yes, certainly. Uh, please give me a second to pull it out of my wallet. Okay, here's my passport that I used to register for the exam. Have a look. You have a very big wallet, Mohammed, if your passport fits into your wallet. Uh, maybe your ID card. Okay. All right. Oh, it says, uh, my pleasure. This is my ID card. I used it to register. Uh, 
uh, here, please have a look. Yeah, that works. Okay, so being original. Yeah. Certainly, I like the word certainly. It's just my diction, I guess. Certainly, diction by the way means your style of speaking. That's what you want it, uh, to sound original, original diction. Okay, so certainly, here is my ID card that I used uh, during the registration process. Please uh, take a look and then give it back. No, I'm just kidding. You don't need to say and then give it back. That's awkward. Um, it's a little bit too upfront. But there, you can stop there. All right. Uh, so repeat after me. Can I see your identification? Certainly. And here's my ID card that I used during the registration process. Please take a look. Okay. All right. And then the next question they ask you after is what is your full name? They'll have your ID while they're asking you this question because they want to look at your ID and make sure that you are who you say you are uh, and not a doppelganger. That happens sometimes in IELTS. Okay. So, um, Carolina says, my given name is Carolina and my surname is Asanyo. Please just refer to me as Carolina. Nice. Always work on fluency speed. Sammy says, my full name is Siva Sankar and my surname is Pulivarthi. Please call me by my nickname, Sammy. Yeah, okay, that works. Piyush says, my full name is Piyush Kishore Shaha. Please call me by my first name, Piyush. Okay, Piyush, yeah, that works. Uh, Seni says, my full name is Seni Sarani. You can call me Seni, which is my first name. Uh, or Seni, you can call me by my first name, Seni. Watch your order of words there, Seni, okay? Bachwik. Pansara, nice to have you chime in. Uh, says, my name is Bachvik and my family name is uh, Pansara. Please, uh, you can address me by my first name, Bachvik. Um, yeah, a little bit more natural, Bachvik. Please address me by my first name. So please address me, not please you can, just please address me by my first name, uh, Bachvik. Okay, hopefully I'm pronouncing that more or less accurately. Okay, Un says, my full name is Nagaim Un, uh, but you can call me Un. It's not a contrast in this case, um, Nagaim. If you say but, then it's a contrast to what you're saying. So I'll show you this one, students, because I see that many students make this mistake, Un, is they use the but incorrectly in this case. So uh, my full name is Timothy... Um, Mac Leroy, let's say. Uh, my full name is Timothy David McLeroy, but you can just call me Tim. Okay, so if you're giving a nickname or if you're giving a short form of your name, then you can do uh, this kind of situation where you can use the but, okay? However, if I say my full name is Timothy David McLeroy, but you can just call me Timothy, uh, that's kind of awkward, okay? So this is more accurate. So if you use but give a short form or a nickname. That's the natural way to do it. And a native ear will catch that, okay? So repeat after me. What is your full name? My full name is Timothy David McLeroy, but you can just call me Tim. Okay, and then they'll say, uh, here is your identification back. Uh, now I will ask you a couple more questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. And then they'll ask you some questions, and those questions will be quite general to begin with, okay? So one very common question they might ask you is, uh, they'll say, okay, now I'll ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better. Uh, where do you live? Where do you live? So again, make sure that you have a clear, fluent, complete answer for this. They're marking you from the beginning, even if they're not marking on their paper, they're thinking about your level, and they're actually adjusting 
the interview based on your level. So one way that you know you're getting a high mark is when they're asking you some more complicated questions later on because they feel that you're going to be able to answer those, okay? Ferdov says, I dwell in a detached house in the suburbs of St. Petersburg, uh, which is the second largest city in Russia and is located in the northwestern part of the country. Um, okay, instead of Russian Federation, Ferdov's. Uh, dwell <laughs> in my neck of the woods, uh, West Coast Canada, that would be a bit awkward. I dwell. It's understandable. It's accurate English, Ferdov's. Um, we do call a home a dwelling, uh, but it's kind of old English. It's like what you would hear in Lord of the Rings. I dwell in a detached house with a queen and a king. Um, so it's a little bit awkward in modern English. I would say I live. Okay. So careful not to get too fancy, but hey, that's why it's good trying for dogs in these live classes. So you learn what works and what doesn't work. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Esther Hun says, well, I'm originally from Dushanbe. It's the capital of Tajikistan, but I moved to Kazakhstan a few years ago. So now I live in a village called Karabulak. Uh, Esther, very good. Um, so you have the location of where you live. Uh, and maybe give your actual dwelling, okay? So the residence, um, the home that you're in. So you live in an apartment, uh, in a home, in a house, um, in a duplex, townhouse, okay? So where do you live exactly, all right? So when you're asked the question of where do you live, think about the location, okay? Country, city, town, uh, province, and then think also about the actual building itself. Okay, uh, Rajveer says, I reside in a three-bedroom apartment in Punjab, uh, state of India. I've been living there with my parents since my birth. Okay, Rajveer, fair enough. That's good. I like your use of present perfect. I like your use of quantitative language. Uh, it's very nice, okay? Present perfect continuous. So excellent. And reside is another way that you could... Uh, say instead of live. So for Dobbs, if you want to use a little bit more advanced English than just saying live, then you can say reside, okay? Your residence, right? Residence is another synonym for dwelling uh, or living space, but it's a little bit maybe more modern English. So um, I reside in a, a three-bedroom uh, condo just on the outskirts of Victoria, which is the capital city of the uh, most western province of Canada, British Columbia. I live there with lovely daughter. Okay. So qualitative, quantitative, connect ideas, be fluent. Here we go. Repeat after me. Uh, where do you live? I reside in a three bedroom condo just on the outskirts of Victoria, which is the capital city of the most Western province of Canada, British Columbia. I live there with my lovely wife and daughter. Okay. Now, if it's where the test is happening, then I live here with my lovely wife and daughter. Okay. All right. And then maybe one more question to get you kind of going and feeling comfortable. Uh, okay. What did you do this morning? All right. Usually examiners don't do fillers. Like they won't say, okay, you're a good job or hmm. They'll just go right to the next question and they'll say something like, what did you do this morning? It's not an ESL exam, so they're not going to slow their language. If you're unlucky, you'll get an examiner that might speak a little bit faster. If you're lucky, you might get an examiner that speaks a little bit slower, but be ready for natural speed with the questions. What did you do this morning? Okay. And they're not going to necessarily enunciate as much as I do. Like, what did you do this morning? Okay. So it's not a, an ESL classroom video. 
All right. Uh, Kevin Bowie says, this morning I had a hectic schedule with five classes back to back at school, starting from seven going until 12. Aside from this, I had about half an hour from 6 to 6.30 a.m. to whip up my breakfast, which was a healthy bowl of glutinous rice topped with pork jelly and fried shallots. Mmm, Kevin, you're making me hungry. That sounds delicious. Uh, very nice use of language, Kevin. So uh, take a note of the language uh, Kevin's using. Uh, whip up means to make quickly. Okay, uh, whip up a uh, plate of scrambled eggs. Okay, some good language there, Kevin. I'm always appreciating that. A uh, hectic schedule is a very common collocation. Hectic schedule, it means very busy with lots to do. Schedule, okay. So I'm always incorporating some language here for you as well. Um, and back-to-back uh, -back classes means one after the other. Uh, anybody know what the exact word is for back-to-back? -back? This expression here, um, it starts with a C, O-N. Can anybody tell me what that is before I read some more of these comments? Back-to-back -back is uh, not continuous. Nope. Consecutive, that's right, On Very good, good job, On. You get a thumbs up. Consecutive. Okay, good job. It means one right after the other. Okay, so the word there is consecutive, back to back, consecutive. Okay, very nice. Good job, students. Okay, I'll read a couple more and then give you an answer of my own. Uh, Vivek says, well, I woke up at 6 a.m. I was excited about my alt speaking exam. I took a shower and then quickly went downstairs to whip up a plate of scrambled eggs. Very smart, Vivek, to use new uh, vocabulary and expressions right away. It helps to uh, solidify that in your mind, okay? Chuku Chioma Judith says, uh, my given name is, my first name is. Okay, Chuku, that's a bit back in the questions, so let's get up to speed to these current questions. Um, Pinty Pop says, well, I woke up at 8 a.m. in the morning and then I attended a live yoga class through Zoom. Later, I had a green tea and right away I went to my study room to write pending emails for my boss or to my boss. Hmm. Pinty, I think maybe you meant for your boss, but perhaps to your boss. Okay, good, Pinty. That works. All right, I dig it. I like it. All right. Okay. So, uh, qualitative, quantitative language, right? After rolling out of bed at around uh, 6.30 a.m., I took a quick uh, shower to freshen up. Then I had a delicious and healthy uh, fruit salad to start my day, after which I sat down to review my notes for this exam and practice some uh, speaking with my partner through, yeah, let's keep it simple, online. Then I uh, used public transit to get to this exam. Okay, here we go. Um, so what did you do this morning? After rolling out of bed around 6.30 a.m., I took a quick shower to freshen up. 
Then I had a delicious and healthy fruit salad to start my day. After which I sat down to review my notes for this exam and practice some speaking with my partner online. Then I used public transit to get to this exam. Okay, so notice that I give a few points. I'm staying sequential. It's clear information. And I'm also giving some reasons of why I'm taking these actions. So I took a quick shower. Why? To freshen up. Okay. I had a delicious and healthy fruit salad. Why? To start my day. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're always thinking about that why, why, why question. Okay. All right. And then the examiner will likely introduce to you uh, the specific but general topic of part one. Like let's talk about pen and paper or let's talk about computers. In this case, the examiner will say, let's talk about animals and plants. It's very general. Uh, most of us have something to say about plants and animals. And then they'll start with something really simple. Okay. Like, what is your favorite animal? Okay. What is your favorite animal? Amanjad says, I love tigers, not only because of their color, but also because of their high speed. And it's the national animal of India. Okay, Amanjad. Um, do you have a statue of a tiger in your home? Do you have a painting of a tiger on your wall? Do you have a t-shirt with a tiger on it? Uh, maybe you can throw that in there. Right, Amanjot, give it that smooth example. So I can give you that higher band score. So I love tigers, not only because of their color, but also uh, because of their agility. Uh, it's the national animal of India. And in fact, I have a couple of shirts with tigers on it and a beautiful big blanket with a tiger's face. Ooh, you really do love tigers. Okay, Amanjot. So Throw that in there. Let me just give you those extra marks. Um, instead of saying high speed, Amanjot, it's okay. Um, but a more advanced way to express that thought is they're fast and agile. Fast and agile. Agile means that they move in very dynamic ways. Okay. Uh, Violet says, well, my favorite animal is the squirrel. I love squirrels not only because they have a tiny little body, but also because they have quick thinking and an active body that can move through branches and climb trees. Yeah, uh, Violet, I think the word that you're also looking for is agile, agile, okay? Okay, agility, to be agile, the ability to move dynamically and flexibly. Gymnasts are agile, okay? Martial artists are often agile, okay? Watch my pronunciation on that word as well, okay? Agility, agile. Again, remember students, you're not just listening to me. Speak, repeat. All right. Let's see what else we've got up here. Beckjohn says, the animal that I like more than any other is the horse just because it's fast and big. In fact, I have two of them at my home and uh, I took a ride on one just last evening. Oh, that's beautiful, Beckjohn. You have some horses. I love horses. They're uh, very calm. And spiritual animals as well, I find, horses. Okay. Flower Sun says, Penguin is the animal I like the most, not only because it's so cute, um, but also because of their specific habitat, how the parents hatch the eggs and protect them from the cold. Uh, yeah, the life of penguins, absolutely, Flower Sun. That's uh, quite amazing. And there are a lot of incredible documentary films about the Cute little penguins. I love penguins too. I have a glass uh, penguin that's teeny tiny. And I love that little glass penguin. Uh, David Valencia says, my favorite animal is the ant, not only because of its relative strength, it can lift 100 times more than its actual weight, but also because of its abilities to cooperate in groups like a society. Recently, I carried out a research about an omnivorous uh, species of ants. Yeah. 
David, uh, ants are absolutely amazing creatures. In fact, they even have commerce. Did you guys know that ants will actually trade different types of fungi between colonies, like farmers trade different types of seed? It's quite amazing. Okay, um, very good. So... I love bears more than any other animals. I even consider it my spirit animal. They are large and powerful, but calm and cute at the same time. They like to sleep through winter and be really active during the summer months. I have at least a dozen teddy bears and half a dozen bear statues around my home. Okay, it's kind of true, half true. All right. Um, you don't have to give the truth in the owls. It just has to be good, clear English and that's fluent. Okay. So uh, repeat after me. What is your favorite animal? I love bears more than any other animal. Uh, I even consider it my spirit animal. They are large and powerful, but calm and cute at the same time. They like to sleep through winter and be really active during the summer months. I have at least a dozen teddy bears and half a dozen bear statues around my home. All right. Now we're talking about animals and plants, so keep your mind open. Do you have a favorite flower? Okay, so oftentimes when you have this dual topic for part one, they'll ask you the same question for the other topic. So what's your favorite animal? Do you have a favorite flower? Okay, all right. Here we go. Lots of great answers coming up. I can see that. Vaishnavi says yes. I do have a fa favorite flower, which is the white lotus. I just love this flower for its appearance and the way that it protects itself in the middle of the pond. Uh, yeah, Vishnavi, that's great. Do you have a pond at your home maybe? Or is there a park near your home where you can see a white lotus frequently? Um, have you taken some pictures of uh, this beautiful flower and posted it? on your Facebook page maybe. So give me a nice, smooth, flowing example so I can give you a higher band score, okay? Moria says, my favorite flower is the lily as it symbolizes purity and fertility. Its meaning varies depending on the type, culture, and color. I personally love white lilies around my house. Moria, that's a beautiful, original, high band answer. That's how you have to do it. Oh, it says, absolutely, I have different types of flowers in my home, some small plants. In addition, in the front door and backyard, most of these flowers, uh, lily and basil. Okay. All right. Ois, one flower. Favorite flower, Ois. One flower. You're off topic. Okay. Careful. Nadia says, yes, of course, I love flowers, and my favorite flower is the red and white rose because of its fragrance. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Uh, Nadia, careful with your word choice. Uh, most favorite, it's just usually favorite. We sometimes say most favorite, but it's a little bit awkward, so careful with that. Okay. Uh, Hassan says, sure, I'm tethered to flowers and gardening. My favorite flower is Asasia, Acacia, sometimes called wattles. It is a native plant in African Australia. Um, I use to take care of them daily. Okay, Hassan, a little bit of grammar there. Careful. Okay. Sandeep says, my favorite flower is the rose because it catches my eye and I have it in my home garden. I usually water them 
in the morning time. Mm-hmm. Very good. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite flower? Yes, I do. I love the peace lily. Not just for its name, but also its beautiful appearance. It has large, uh, dark green leaves and long, shiny white flowers. with yellow pollen. These flowers look uh, great <clears throat> in the living room or in the garden. And they flower for at least a few weeks. I always have one in my house. Okay. All right, so peace lily is the flower I'm going to go with. Keep it simple. If it's the rose, it's the rose. If it's the tulip, it's the tulip. If it's the Diefenbachia, it's the Diefenbachia. If you come to my hometown of Victoria, you'll see millions of different flowers. It's called the Garden City. Um, <clears throat> here we go. Repeat after me. Do you have a favorite flower? Yes, I do. I love the peace lily not just for its name, but also its beautiful appearance. It has large dark green leaves and long shiny white flowers with yellow pollen. These flowers look great in the living room or in the garden, and they flower for at least a few weeks. I always have one in my house, okay? Not just, but also. Use these kinds of correlative conjunctions, both and, not just, but also, whether or, neither nor either or use these okay <clears throat> all right uh next question what kinds of animals do you usually see give me a nice answer for that one what kinds of animals do you usually see For dogs, I regularly see birds in my area, like swallows, ducks, and chickens. Moreover, I see dogs, cats, cows in the mornings when I drive my car uh, to my work. Good for dogs. I like your explanation. So when you're seeing them, so you're good conjunction there, good use of a complex sentence structure. Excellent. Kevin says, on a regular basis, I meet with dogs and cats in my neighborhood, whether they are in the house or prowling the streets as well. Once in a while, I catch sight of an Oriole, mm, interesting, perching on my balcony and singing. It's always amusing to see animals um, fitting in with human society. Just human society, Kevin, not humans, human society. Good. Let's see some more. Fennel says, as I live in a metropolitan area, I cannot see too many different kinds of animals, but the ones that I do often see are dogs as a pet. However, um, going to the zoo to see different kinds of animals is the perfect place. Uh, Fennel, don't go off topic. Stay on topic. What kinds of animals do you usually see? Okay, what kind of animals do you usually see, all right? So most often, frequently, every day, I always, okay? Uh, Shri says, I usually see dogs, cats, and cows. Sometimes I happen to see a garden lizard, a chameleon, in my backyard. It's beautiful to have animals around me. It gives me a peace of mind. Shri, keep it about yourself. Students, for part one, always keep it about yourself. So, Shri, don't say animals around you. Unfortunately, there are no chameleons around me. 
sometimes I see lizards, but no chameleons. That would be really cool. Uh, so keep it about you, okay? About you. All right. Um, in my area, I most often see dogs and cats of all shapes and sizes as well. I see pigeons and crows. Sometimes I'll even catch a an army of ants stealing crumbs in my kitchen. <laughs> All right. So uh, here we go. Repeat after me. What kinds of animals do you usually see? In my area, I most often see dogs and cats of all shapes and sizes, as well as I see pigeons and crows. Sometimes I'll even catch an army of ants stealing crumbs in my kitchen. All right, students, let's do one more. Let's jump right to this last question. Let's keep it original. Um, if you could go to see plants and animals anywhere in the world, where would you go? That's a good closing question. Part one gets more and more difficult as you go along. Uh, make sure to use the grammar of the question. If you could, where would you? If I had the chance, I would go. Okay. Um, so reflect the grammar use the question okay if i could go see some fauna and flora i should say flora and fauna if i could go see flora and fauna anywhere around the planet i would definitely because in the last david attenborough documentary i saw okay so give me a nice full sentence answer for this one, if you could go to see plants and animals anywhere in the world, where would you go? Okay, I've been to Costa Rica. That's one really cool place to go. Okay, nice full sentence answer. I'm sure many of you have thought about this. Most of us have watched documentary films and thought to ourselves, hey, that would be a great place to visit and check out those plants and birds. Okay, uh, Somia says, I definitely choose to go to Atlanta to explore different kinds of water animals. Uh, do you mean the Atlantic Ocean? I think that's what you're trying to say. Okay, make sure you're using accurate information. Okay. Anas says, without a shadow of a doubt, I would go to the Amazon rainforest in Brazil because there's a wide range of plants and animals that would be really exciting to see. Like what, Anas? What would be there? What could you see? Name a couple of plants and animals and maybe, um, not maybe, but definitely uh, use the question, if I could go without a shadow of a doubt, it would be the Amazon jungle. Okay. All right. Victor said, says, if I had the chance, I would go to Alaska because in this place there are many different animals such as tigers and lions that are rare animals. Um, Victor, I don't think there are tigers and lions in Alaska, but there are definitely uh, grizzly bears and caribou and elk and mountain lions, mountain lions, like the cougar, maybe that's what you're thinking about, okay? But again, Victor, it doesn't matter, so the truth doesn't matter. Um, if you believe that you can see those animals there, as long as you say that clearly, you'll still get a good band score, okay? Hassan says, well, I would definitely go to see the mangroves in a tropical area because it's really worth to see how these plants grow out of the water and they have really unique shapes as well. Of course, Hassan, you might see a crocodile or an alligator in the mangroves and mangroves often have bats and other very unique birds uh, in mangroves. I've had the fortune of seeing the Florida and the Costa Rica mangroves, so absolutely incredible places. 
Uh, Nguyen uh, says, if I had, this is Nguyen Kuen, uh, if I had an opportunity to see some fauna and flora on the planet, I'd definitely visit Dalat, which has acquired its reputation for, let me see if I can find the rest of what you wrote there, for something, okay, definitely a good start. All right. Let's see one more. Nick Hill says, if I had a chance to see fauna and flora worldwide, I would definitely like to visit Amazon and Brazil to see crocodiles and the anaconda. Yeah, crocodiles, maybe alligators. I'm not sure, Nikhil. I'd have to check that, okay? Uh, given the chance to explore the fauna and flora anywhere on the planet, I would like to visit the bamboo forests of China in hopes of coming across panda bears in their natural habitat. As I had mentioned, I'm really into bears and one of the rarest and most incredible species on the planet is without a doubt the giant panda. Okay, here we go. Uh, so repeat after me, if you could go to see plants and animals anywhere in the world, where would you go? Given the chance to explore the fauna and flora anywhere on the planet, I would like to visit the bamboo forests of China in hopes of coming across panda bears in their natural habitat. As I had mentioned, I'm really into bears, and one of the rarest and most incredible species on the planet is without a doubt the giant panda. Okay? All right. Students, notice the paraphrasing here. Fauna, flora instead of animals, plants. Um, on the planet, anywhere in the world. Practice your paraphrasing. Lots and lots of paraphrasing will get you higher and higher band scores. And if you'd like this lesson and you want more lessons like this, we've got over uh, 45 practice speaking interviews in HD on aehelp.com. We got 30 uh, for general IELTS. Uh, we've got original practice exams. Go to our websites, do yourself a favor, spend a couple dollars, join the thousands of students who learn from us every single day. Uh, for academic IELTS, it's aehelp.com. For general IELTS, it's gltshelp.com. Help us help you to improve quickly and get higher band scores. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. There were so many of you. I'm sorry if I didn't get to all of your comments, but I promise I will always try to uh, reflect on different students commenting in the chat. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and tomorrow I will be back with task one and reading for the IELTS exam. Have a fantastic day, and hopefully I'll see all of you tomorrow. I'm Adrian, signing out from the heart of Europe for now. Much love to all of you. Bye.